Hi, in the midterm exam, you may remember that I provided you with a program prompt, the program's requirements, and a sample output. The program you're going to develop for the final exam's programming prompt number one is dynamic, meaning it will run differently depending on user input. And since it's a dynamic program that will have different output options, I wanted to create a video that demonstrates how the program works depending on user input. As a heads up, the programming prompt number one for the final exam will include all of the concepts presented in the course except the development of your own class and objects or the information that was covered in the last section's content. While the program will address a variety of concepts, the main focus of the program is control statements, so selection statements like if-else blocks and iteration statements like for or while loops. From a broad perspective, the program you develop is going to include a birthday message generator. Based on the input provided by the user, a tailored birthday message will be printed. The program includes selection statements to clarify a set of if-else blocks, which controls the program's execution. The if-else blocks will be used to determine which variation of the birthday message the user receives. All users, regardless of age, are going to get the standard birthday song, but users under 21 are going to get a youthful version, whereas users 21 and older will get a more mature message that says something like, enjoy your special day. The youthful version of the birthday message we'll use a loop to count up to the user's age. The lyrics printed for the youthful version of the birthday message will likely be familiar. They'll be, are you one, are you two, are you three, up to the user's age. So, with a cursory understanding of, the, what, of what the program does, let's see it in action. The first thing you will notice is that there is an application header at the top of the output window that tells the user what the application does. You'll also notice the first user prompt that asks for the user's name. Once the user's name is entered, a second user prompt is printed that asks for the user's age. Take a moment to consider the following. What programming elements are required in order for you to get and store user input? How will your prompts be written to maximize usability and readability? What variables will you need to store user input as well as user input that has been modified or manipulated? And finally, what types of data will the program variables store? To test one selection option of the program, I'm going to input my name and an age that is 21 or over. Once the data is input, we will review the mature birthday message generated. So I type my name and press enter. And then I type my age and press enter. Let's evaluate the message. First, notice that the standard birthday song is printed. The song has been personalized to include my name in all uppercase letters. After the standard birthday song, you will see a mature message that says, enjoy your special day. This time I'm going to input my name and an age that is under 21. Once the data is input, we'll review the youthful birthday message generated. Okay, so I'm going to type my name and press enter. Then I'm going to type an age. I'm going to pick a young age so that the message generated isn't super long. I'm going to select 4 and press enter. Let's evaluate the message. Notice again that the standard birthday song has been printed and it has been printed in a personalized manner. After the message, we see an iteration statement in action. The loop included in the program counts up to the user's age, printing a fun lyric of the song each iteration of the loop. Take a moment to consider the elements required for the loop to generate the youthful message. Remember, all loops contain four standard elements. Element number one, the counter variable. For this program, what would the counter variable be initialized to? In other words, what would be the loop's start value? Element number two, the condition statement. How much 
how must the condition statement be written to ensure one that the loop starts and two that the loop ends element number three the counter modification statement how is the counter modified after each successful iteration of the loop and element number four the loop body what programming statements are included in the body of the loop so that's it for the execution preview. Review this video as many times as necessary to get a solid grasp of the program's requirements as well as a good idea of the programming elements necessary to create the program. Remember to reach out if you have any questions or concerns and when ready, complete the questions included in the final exam program design document.